What we have to do, however, is for ground state, the first set of determinants that we must include is actually Wx additives, right? Because they, there is no Brillouin theorem between Hartree-Fock and Wx determinant. So now this block will not be zero, and obviously ground state will start to improve by interaction with the Wx determinants. And you can do ground state Wx and then singly excited you will see that the singly excited contribute. So, I will just look at the structure now. Now that you have understood the structure, very quickly I will write down. So, let us first do take CI doubles. CI with only doubles. So, this is no longer there, okay. So, I have Hartree-Fock and W accelerated. So, what will be the structure of the matrix now? Now, I can directly write. Again, I do not have to derive this. So, I can do the method of projection and keep deriving similarly. So, first structure is E Hartree form, one number. Then I will have a structure of elements between psi Hartree form, H, psi ABRS, correct? Exactly in the same manner. And this will be the conjugate. So, this will become psi CDTU, H, psi Hartree form. Please note that I am again using just like here. I had used psi bs for projection I am using psi cdt, a specific determinant which is part of ABRS. So, and then you have this block which is psi cdtu h psi ABRS. I hope all of you can just derive this routinely. Just starting with the Schrodinger equation, do method of projection. First psi Hartree fock then write psi cdt, project to psi cdt and then you will get this equation C0 and all C A B R S or C C D T whatever equal to E times C C D T. If I am projecting with psi C D T, I will get E times C C D T, but actually it is a column. From that column, only C D T will survive, okay. So that is an eigenvalue equation in general. Now you see this is no longer 0 because these are there is no Brillouin theorem for this. In fact, these integrals are nothing but A B R S. AB anti-symmetrized RS and this is RS CD, uh, the CD anti-symmetrized or TU anti-symmetrized CDU. So, these values will all be there, okay. So, this is a completely coupled matrix and you have to now diagonalize this. So, for the first time, the ground state will no longer be E Hartree form. Ground state will now change because of the coupling terms here, here and so on, okay. And, and, and you will have a separate result. And now again you have to use Slater rule for each of them. So, this is of course quite clear, you will be using only Slater rule C. But this block, this small block, which I am now calling HDD, just in this terminology of HSS, is the doubles into doubles. So, let us look at this block a little bit more carefully. So, I have H doubles, which is psi CDTU. So, you have H doubles into doubles that is psi CDTU. So, one of the WX array determinants H with another WX array determinant. Of course, eventually there will be sum and so on to get an eigenvalue equation, but I am just looking at this matrix a little. Now, you can see even by Slater rule, lot of integrals will vanish, even by Slater rule. And, and lots of integrals will remain, of course, by Slater rule. So, for example, so many possibilities are there. Let us say, a equal to C, B equal to D, R equal to T, S equal to U. So, I have two doubly excited determinants with respect to Hartree Fock, but they are same. Which rule you will apply? First one, so rule A, let us say rule A. I can keep on changing, maybe A is not equal to C, but B equal to D, R equal to T. S equal to U. Which rule will apply? B. A is not equal to C, but B is equal to T. Everything else is equal. So, rule B, only one occupancy difference. 
So, if I give you such problems, will you be able to identify? Which rule to apply first? That is very important. Then write the rule in second level of problem. So, these are all technical problems, important. Of course, if you have, you can have two occupancy difference, rule C, but then there are many integrals which will be 0. You can see there will be 3, 4, up to 4 difference. When everything is different, what is the occupancy difference? A is not equal to, so A, B, A is not equal to C, B is not equal to D, so A is not equal to C, B is not equal to D, R is not equal to S, T is not equal to E. You understand? So the ones which are projected here, C, D to T, they are different. So different places T and U have come. And the ones which are replaced here are also different. Different places R and S have come. They can be of different places can be always interchanged. That's a negative sign. That is not a problem where it goes. But eventually, if you look at the differences, they have differences of R, S and T, U in different, different places. So here you have R, S and C, D. Here you have T, U and A, B. So let us take a four electron determinant. This will have R, S, C, D because he originally started with ABCD, Hartree Fock was my ABCD, let us say 4 electron. I have now replaced AB with RS. So, this determinant is nothing but RSCD, right? And this determinant would be nothing but TUCD, uh, sorry, uh, ABTU. So, you can clearly see that if I compare the RSCD and ABTU, all are different, right? So, it is a 4 occupation difference, correct? I hope, I hope you can see. So, I am taking a simple 4 electron problem where my psi Hartree Fock is A, B, C, D. With these are the spin orbital. Then I am writing what is psi C, D, T, U. Psi C, D, T, U is C, D replaced by T, U. You should be able to write this. So, it is A, B, T, U, correct? And then I have psi A, B, R, S. They are all different, okay. So, it is a different block. So, A, B is now replaced by R, S. So, you have R, S, C, D. Since they are different, everything is changed now. Of course, if some of them are equal, then it would be a different case, okay. So, a maximum of 4 occupation difference, which are anyway 0. There are 3 occupation difference, which are also 0. Only up to 2, they will remain. The point that I am trying to say that this block will have lots of zeros coming from Slater rule. And then again further because of spatial symmetry, of course. But even rule A is applicable here, just like rule A was also applicable here for single singles when AR is equal to BS. So between there will be a diagonal term. So basically they are the diagonal terms. So wherever I have a diagonal terms here, you are applying rule A because diagonal term is nothing but the same determinant on both sides, right? It has to be rule A. And the off diagonal terms can be rule B, rule C and 0 or 0 depending on what they are. So this requires a little bit of practice and I will ask everybody to do it. Take a 4 electron problem, 5 electron problem, 6 electron. Do this, you know, make it different, just see what you are getting so that you will know what rules to apply for the, the, the CI problem, okay. So, so essentially this is how we analyze and then you diagonalize because of the fact that there is a coupling term. Now the energy will change. So what will be the result of the energy? We will discuss. So in fact, the CI problem will require at least two to three classes. We will see uh, to discuss this. So we will first do CI doubles because this is very important. Then we will see how singles in the presence of doubles starts to contribute. We have already noticed that singles alone does not change the ground state energy. But we will see if I have taken doubles and then singles, then singles has a role even for ground state energy despite Brillouin's theorem because doubles is already there. So that coupling will actually help. So we will see this but first we will more thoroughly analyze double CI and we will place this CI doubles in perspective to perturbation theory. For example, MP2 energy, how these energies are different. They are by itself very interesting study uh, before we go to CISD and after we tell CISD the rest is really a technology, you know, triples, quadruples, I am not going to bother. What we are going to do after that is to look at the deficiencies of approximate CI. Full CI is of course no problem, but we can never do full CI. I, as I told you, MCN is too large. So what are the deficiencies of approximate CI? 
is something that we will see why CI is not good, why perturbation is better, CI is not good and why couple cluster is definitely the best. So, that will come later, later part of the course when you understand what are the important chemistry that we need to ensure that our theories must have, okay. All right. So, next class is uh, we will continue here. Thank you.